Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be going over Gold Mythic Sarge who is going to be a new Gold Mythic character coming to the Advanced Token Wheel. You can pick him up with your Advanced Tokens if you so wish. We've never had a Sarge in the game before visually. He looks kind of cool, just kind of like just a military op sort of guy. Um, maybe giving me like, I don't know, sort of Terminator vibes. I don't know, I don't know why I'm getting that sort of vibe um, from him. Um, but it is the way it is. Um, he's a tough character. Doesn't look like he has an attached weapon on the right-hand side. Doesn't actually look like he's got an attached weapon on the left-hand side, but he could because we're only seeing the, the, the sort of like butt of the rifle right there, really. It looks like just a default rifle, but it looks kind of cool. He's got a nice knife on his back. You see there's the stars. It's purple and green. Interesting knife. Um, and like a logo on his hat. I'm not sure if that's going to be like, you know, actually attached to anything. Just something to note. Um, if we look at his stats at limit break three, level 1,440, he has got 30,933 attack, 19,333 defense, and 27,066 HP. So a bit more leaning towards the attack side of things. He is going to be a tough character holding that rifle, of course. He is going to be a support character. Obviously, a support character can be defensive or offensive, but it looks like this is more an offensive support just based on the stats a gold mythic character of course and lastly he is going to be joining the hidden allegiance so another character to join the hidden allegiance could be good just in the game in general but don't forget there is a faction assault boss right now that does require you to take in hidden characters which is honestly one of the harder faction bosses in there so first up we're going to look at his adrenaline rush and it is called ready and deadly it has a recharge rate of 55 AP, so actually pretty quick. This character gets 100% bonus HP, stun the target for two turns if they have bonus HP, and deal 800% damage to three enemies. So, you know, three different things going on here. Quite different things as well. Him getting bonus HP is just going to increase his survivability during the fight. He is going to be a little bit more defensive anyway in terms of his stats, a little bit more towards the defense, but um, he's got higher HP than defense. So his bonus HP should be actually pretty decent. It's going to be at least 28,000 bonus HP there, which is actually pretty reasonable on an attack team. Stunning an enemy for two turns if they have bonus HP isn't going to be too hard to do. A lot of characters have bonus HP procs most turns, honestly, at the moment in, in war and so on and so forth. I'm not sure if this would work in um, Faction Assault so much because I don't think there's too much bonus HP for the bosses in Faction Assault, so I don't think there'd be much control there, but he isn't a control character, so the chance of that even occurring would be quite slim anyway because of the um, resistances they have. 800% is no joke. That's actually pretty decent damage. His attack stat is reasonably high. It's 31k, obviously with the multipliers that are going to come in, so on and so forth. Then he's obviously going to get that nice and high as well. This cannot crit. It's just going to be flat damage. So, um, you know, just something to note. Attack set pretty much if you want to get the best out of this rush when it comes to the damage. So here we are, we have his Adrenaline Rush. We are going to rush an alert character. And he's going to do 800% damage. Which seems to do a reasonable amount of damage against an alert character. Specifically, obviously, he's going to do trait damage. There could be other things in his kit that does bonus damage against characters. Based on, you know, something that they had on their kit. We'll have to check it out. But um, there's definitely some other things that are happening on this attack team. Which are going to be quite useful in most parts of the game. But before we get on to what those other things could be, we're going to check out the upgrades on Sarge's Rush here. You can see at grade 3, he gets plus 400% damage. So it goes from 400% up to 800%. That is an amazing upgrade. Only one copy required for that. At grade 5, two copies, you get two damage targets. So initially, it's a single target um, Rush. Again, quite a nice boost. It goes up to three targets. And then at LB2, it gets an upgrade where to stun the target for two turns if they have bonus HP. Now you saw he does pretty reasonable damage specifically against alert characters. So if you've got an extremely tanky character and you don't manage to take them out, you've got a chance of stunning them, making it so they're obviously easier to take out by other people. Their weapon won't proc when other people attack, or simply just they won't have turns. As simple as that. So um, you know it's, it's kind of that's kind of a get out of jail free card when it comes to um, dealing with certain characters if you don't actually manage to do enough damage. So this rush actually seems not too bad at all. You saw the 100% bonus HP come in as well, but it seemed to be quite amplified damage. It was very heavy here. 800% is a lot, but to one-shot someone like Nor with full bonus HP takes a lot. So there must be something else going on in this kit. We're going to check it out. It's probably in the passes, but we'll check out the signature move next just to see what else is on the table for Sarge's damage amplification. 
And here is that scenic true, and it is called Team Moving In. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. Two hidden allegiance teammates get camouflage and focus for three turns, and three other teammates get camouflage and focus for two turns. Deal 600% damage to a line of enemies. Those enemies get days for two turns. So quite a lot going on here. Let's just talk about the camouflage and focus part of it. If you have a full team of hidden characters on Faction Assault, three characters will get the camouflage and focus for three turns and two will get it for two turns. The same will happen in a raid situation, of course, Sarge being one of those hidden characters. So it'll always be three characters getting focus and camouflage in a raid situation. And then obviously more, the more hidden characters you use. Now in Faction Assault, it's worth noting that the boss you come up against does confuse on her basic attacks and it's horrible honestly it's a 40 percent chance to proc where two enemies will get confused for two turns you're decapping your own team it's frustrating this should help a lot with that due to the focus because obviously focus makes it so you can bypass confuse and you're just going to attack like normal so that's nice the second part is quite nice 600 percent damage to a line of enemies is pretty good those enemies getting days as well is nice because this is obviously going to be turn one Days is the most effective off of turn one, honestly. Like, trying to get days in really early is good. If it was on the rush, wouldn't be as effective because you want to stop those early signature moves from defense teams. And a lot of the time, signature moves is where a lot of the power in, you know, defense team characters is because they're more likely to actually get that off. So having someone who can daze that is nice. And it's also a controlled hit because it does a line of enemies rather than the rush, which does just one enemy plus two random enemies. You can control this damage quite a lot. You know who it's going to hit. You know if it's going to hit like a payback or not. So you can decide who you're going to attack and know what the ramifications of doing that are going to be. So here we are on turn one and I'm going to attack the same character again. She's going to have less health overall because her bonus HP is not maxed. It's going to be a 600% hit. And we're going to see, as you can see, quite a lot of damage coming out. If we didn't take her out, she would have been dazed just like Alice behind her. A two turn daze on particular characters stops things like decap resist coming in halo these sort of things and those are obviously extremely frustrating to have to deal with so it's kind of like a preemptive ransack as much as he doesn't steal things away he just stops certain bars from actually happening in the first place so quite a nice support character in my opinion here now when it comes to the focus and camouflage you can see all of my team have it for two turns but sarge has it for three because he of course is a hidden character so of course if you do want an entire team to get camo and focus, you will need at least one other hidden character to be in the team. Otherwise, it will just be four characters that get the focus and the camo, which isn't as obviously good, um, especially if you want it to go to a very particular character, a bit random there. If we look at the upgrades though on Sarge's signature move, you can see at grade two, it gets an upgrade where two hidden teammates get focus for two turns. At grade 4, it gets an upgrade where that line of enemies gets days for two turns. And then at limit break 1, it gets an upgrade where three other teammates get focus and camouflage for two turns. So this is kind of just like upgrade city. Then we go to limit break 3, it gets a minus 1 to starting cooldown. So it goes from a two turn starting cooldown down to a one turn starting cooldown. As a support signature move, I think this is going to work extremely well on raids and so on and so forth. Camouflage is amazing. You can basically get off a lot of early damage this way. And certain other parts of his kit are going to be really good as well because he brings some Guardian Shields into the fight. If you haven't noticed, there are Guardian Shields popping up. And that does obviously mean that he can potentially take down or attack certain Reflect characters. His teammates are not going to take that damage because of the camo. But someone else in his team can also do that as well because there is two Guardian Shields that I was seeing. It is worth noting that the camo and focus comes in before he does the damage. So potentially, like I say, he could attack someone who would normally do reflect. So for instance, even a payback character with this signature move and the camo would already have come in protecting his team from any sort of team base reflect. Nice signature move. I think it's going to work pretty well. Now, before we get into the passives, guys, we're going to be doing the giveaway. If you want to enter the giveaway for advanced tokens, we'll have 10,000 for the winner and 5,000 for two runners up. All you have to type in the chat is attention. You're talking to the Sarge here. Attention. That's what you have to type in the chat to enter, guys. Best of luck if you do enter. Now back to the video. So lastly, the main thing to check out on Sarge's main kit is going to his mythic abilities. These are his passives, of course. 
He has got cunning because he's a support character, so he's 30% less likely to proc things. But he doesn't actually do this too often. So, for instance, he's only going to do it on basic attacks. I don't think his rush or signature move can crit, so that basically means that that's not going to have a chance to be an issue. The next up is Shields Up. At the start of each turn, 100% chance two random hidden allegiance teammates get Guardian Shield and one other teammate gets Guardian Shield. This is obviously really, really good because Guardian Shields stop characters from getting reflected. In certain scenarios, it's going to be really good. Obviously, you can only dictate this to a hidden character. So if you have a hidden damage dealer and Sarge in the team, then it's always going to go to those two plus one other random teammate. But that way you could take, for instance, Ghost, who guaranteed going to get a Guardian Shield at the beginning of the turn, and nuke someone who would normally do payback to the entire team and he'd survive it. I'll show that in a test for his passives in just a second. Next, we have Unseen Surprise. When other teammates receive the Camouflage status effect, 65% chance a random enemy gets a random debilitating status effect for two turns. This turns his signature move into such an amazingly powerful signature move. Potentially can normalize enemies on that sig. Obviously confuse, stun, he can do so many different things. We're going to test this out a couple of times just to see how this can work. And then lastly, cutthroat training. Cutthroat 2 specialist skill damage bonus is increased by 60% more than normal. So this is potentially what could have been happening in the clips before because he was doing substantial amounts of damage. Obviously, he is going to be a cutthroat specialist. Anyone who is controlled by a debilitating status effect, which is going to happen quite a lot due to his signature move and the unseen surprise um, passive, then he will do bonus damage against those characters. And obviously, because the camo comes in first, when you're doing the signature move, you could potentially put a debilitating status effect on the character you're attacking before the damage comes in. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened in the previous clip. Okay, so we're going to attack here. and We should have some Guardian Shields pop up. There we go. We've got a Guardian Shield going on Clementine, which is going to be onto one random teammate. And then we have two Guardian Shields, which is going to land on two random hidden characters. However, if you've only got two hidden characters... It'll always go to those characters. You've always got one because Sarge is one. Plus another, in this case, is Ghost. So I know I'm going to start the fight. And at the beginning of the fight, Ghost is always going to get a Guardian Shield. This will actually happen at the beginning of every turn too. So I know that Ghost is always going to have Guardian Shields. It's going to be good against certain Reflect characters. So that's actually really, really good in my opinion. Um, we're going to get onto that a little bit later on in this clip and how effective that can be. But first, we're going to do Sarge's signature move against this bottom line of characters down here. Now, the order things are going to happen is going to be, I'm going to do a signature move. My team's going to get camouflage. That's going to be four procs of camouflage in this case. So it'll be four chances at 65% chance that a random enemy is going to get a debilitating status effect. Then if it lands on one of these two characters down the bottom, I will do amplified damage against them because of Sarge's special skill, because he does better damage against characters with debilitating status effects. So we're going to do this signature move. And we're going to do big damage against a character down the bottom right. As you can see, did land a Confuse, so did more damage against them because of that. We also landed an Impair against um, the big boy in the, the top right-hand corner. So that's actually just, you know, worth noting. Now, if we do the signature move of Ghost now, as you can see, he's going to take someone out. Second hit's going to come in. We can Command Ghost. And this is the situation I was talking about before. He's got a Guardian Shield. If he was to manage to nuke Peacekeeper here, which he does manage to do, the Guardian Shield will stop the payback damage. The camo from Sarge will stop the reflect for the rest of the team. And he's decapped. And this just seems like another way that you can deal with some of these reflect payback characters going forwards. So we'll check out the upgrades on these passives. And you can see at grade one, he gets the first half of Shields up, where it's a 50% chance to random hit him. Allegiance teammates get Guardian Shield, and one other teammate gets Guardian Shield. A grade 2 is going to be the first half of Cunning, making it 15% less likely to trigger weapon effects against enemies and walkers. And at grade 3, he gets the second half of Shields Up, making a 100% chance at the beginning of every turn, two random hidden Allegiance teammates get a Guardian Shield, and then one random teammate gets a Guardian Shield as well. This is obviously great when I was talking about, like, Ghost will just get a... In that case, we'll get a Guardian Shield at the beginning of every turn, which is great. Um, at Grade 4, he gets the first half of Unseen Surprise, 
When other teammates receive the camouflage status effect, 20% chance a random enemy gets a random debilitating status effect for two turns. And at grade five, he gets the first half of cutthroat training where his cutthroat two specialist skills damage bonus is increased by 20% more than normal. So it's not like a chance to proc, it's just a lower power of it, which again, like I like quite a lot. Then we'll move on to the limit break upgrades, as you can see. And we have Cunning 2 coming in at limit break 1, making it 30% less likely to trigger weapons on walkers and humans. At limit break 2, we have Unseen Surprise 2 come in, making it a 65% chance total each time camouflage is procced. There's going to be a random enemy getting a debilitating status effect. And at limit break 3, we're going to have Cutthroat Training 2 come in, making um, it a 60% more effective um, specialist skill. So obviously just increasing the power of that specialist skill further. Now, I think this is honestly some of the best passives when it comes to how they're ordered in terms of how you can get this character to a high grade and have a very, very good um, specialist who's going to do more damage. So for instance, if you want Sarge to do more damage, he has to be limit break three. But if you don't manage to get him to limit break three and you get him to like, grade five or limit break one he's gonna be a very good support character with the guardian shields and a chance to do some of the uh debilitating status effects obviously a little bit more chance to do it when he gets to limit break two but he basically progresses from support character into a reasonable damage dealer over the course of his passives the guardian shields coming in first is very nice it means you can team him up quite early regardless of how much power you get on the character even if you only get him to grade four one copy you could potentially have a really good idea with like Ghost or Eva, and that's gonna obviously gonna be work nicely because if you manage to get Eva to prop turn one, she can do her massive rush on you know central character. It doesn't matter who the overload damage lands on, as long as it takes them out, she can hit and they take one reflect because of that guardian shield. Kind of nice there. So these passives work great, and he does seem like a one of the best offensive support characters in the game adding a lot of what people want camouflage focus a bit of damage as well and some control so very nice character indeed now we'll just touch on his specialist skill because some of you may not know where it is it's cutthroat 2 he gets a boost to this on his passives but it says whenever this character deals damage to a fighter that is under the effect of a debilitating status they will deal 100 percent more damage it should be 160% more damage, I'm guessing, and that's gonna be very nice indeed. It's gonna work with his Adrenaline Rush, it's gonna work with his basic attacks, it's gonna work with his signature move. Anything that does damage against characters that have debilitating status effects, it's pretty much as simple as that. Now he has not got an attached weapon, so obviously you're gonna to have to figure out what you wanna do when it comes to his attached weapon. If you just put in attack on 1535, it's probably ideal just to get that damage up as much as possible. He will need AP, so AP on attack as well. And obviously in the other slot, he can't proc his weapon on his attack. So he can't do things like double attack, so on and so forth. So you might want to make a kind of strange weapon where it has like impair on it. So that if he does taunt somebody on those random debilitating status effects, or if someone just attacks him, there is a chance that he'll be able to impair them. There could be something else on that third slot that you've got an idea of. But like I say, not much is going to proc when it comes to him actually doing attacks. So this was Gold Mythic Sarge, and it's actually worth noting that because he gets the Guardian Shield and because of that camouflage that came in as we were looking through the kit, his Adrenaline Rush is a little bit you know, more powerful now. He could effectively even target Peacekeeper with his Adrenaline Rush, knowing that if he took him out, that Reflect is going to come back and just remove the Guardian Shield. So his Adrenaline Rush isn't as random and problematic as it is on most characters because of the camo that's going to be on the entire team. And because of the guardian shield that's going to land it does pretty good damage as well so if they have got a debilitating status effect already you're looking at a massive boost of 160 percent more damage against the character on what is an 800 percent rush already this is why i think it was nuking so hard before so potential damage of sarge isn't actually that bad if anyone remembers sam and tom you can remember the kind of damage output that he had it's going to be the same sort of deal but do tell me your thoughts on gold mythic sarge if you do enter the giveaway Best of luck. That is the end of my video, guys. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.